Okay, so this one's a little bit weird. Um, a convenience store is going to try and blow up every everything. So we don't want we don't want that to happen. Somehow they have nuclear centrifuges and they're planning to override them and blow everything up. That's bad. We're going to fix that. Uh, <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Execution Agent A is going to handle everything. He's going to head through 800 and 799. And you'll see here that there are five registers here that have these are pressure gauges for the five cylinders that are here. I'm covering up the back ones, but know that there are five cylinders here, each one of these with power. You use 800 to get from cylinder to cylinder, minus one to go back. We don't have to go back at any point. Uh, you can see also a little image here showing these things as they start to get higher pressure. So to try and override these cylinders, what you have to do is you have to go through all five of them and find the one that has the highest pressure and, def and diffuse that one, right? A uh, value of zero to the power register to shut that one off specifically. Sometimes the music is a little too loud. I can't think. So you find the highest one. You, and then you diffuse that one. So this one, you'll see that ZGC4 has the highest value of 186. So you would get uh, clear out ZGC4, which I'm covering it. But you can see there's a host on each of these cylinders. It's the fourth one. The, the register corresponds with how many cylinders in it is. And that's an important note as well. So you take that value. That's the highest one. You go in there, you diffuse it. And what will end up happening is the pressures in here will all change. ZGC4 will turn into a pressure of zero. The other ones will all increase. And then you have to find the next highest one because it might not necessarily be that uh, ZGC3 is the next highest one after you diffuse the first cylinder. It might be suddenly that C0 jumps up and then you have to diffuse that one. So you have to wait until after you've diffused to go through and try and calculate what the next highest one is. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm pretty hard coding the, the loop that I have here because these registers are all hard coded names. I can't there's no programmatic way I'm aware of that would let me pull from these registers. So I have to be pulling from each of them in an order. And so I have a mark at the beginning that says we're going to we're going to find the highest. So the first thing we do is we check zero and one and uh, whichever one's higher we will mark down in our X register. So right now zero is higher, so we're gonna mark down X, but we're gonna multiply the value that's in that register by 10. So it's 158, and we're actually gonna store 1,580 in X. The reason for that is the first three digits of X are going to be used for calculating the pressures, finding the highest pressure. The fourth digit, the ones place, is going to tell us which cylinder we need to diffuse. So right now, this is saying that cylinder zero has a pressure of 158. Now, the reason I'm doing that instead of zero 158 is for comparison purpose. So here's what's going to happen next. We've already checked zero and one. Now we're going to check two. We're going to multiply the value of two by 10 as well. And we're going to store that in our T register. So that one has 1,590. We're going to compare that to what we currently have saved. And since uh, the way that number comparison works, uh, if 159 is higher than 158, which is what these are, then it doesn't matter what's in the ones place. If 1580 versus 1590, like 1589 is still gonna be less than 1590 zero. So storing it, the, the value we're comparing in the first three digits leaves us that fourth digit for storing the information we need. So we check and see, is is the the pressure in two higher? It is. So what we do is we don't jump in check three. We actually store now the value in two. We multiply that by 10, store it in X, and then we add two to it. So now we're saying that in cylinder two is the pressure 159. Now we'll check three. Three has a pressure of 176. So that's gonna end up replacing. So now we've got 176 in three. And then four is going to be even higher, 186. So that's going to become 186, four. Next, we will create our diffuser and we will do a test ourselves. And I'll explain this test to you uh, after we do a few diffusals. But for now, let's take a look at what our diffuser is going to do. He's going to link minus one to get back into the inventory. And then he's going to link 798 to get into start going into the cylinders. Then he's going to take the first digit, the ones place digit that's in his X, and he's going to put it into his T, which is four. That means he has to jump forward four more cylinders. 
And that's what he's going to do. He's going to link 800 in a T loop uh, until he ends up and he's off. He's off of the screen now for me and my thing's locked. So you'll have to take take my word that he is now currently in the last cylinder here and he's going to power it down. And there you go. You can see that these things are starting to shake. Uh, sorry, you can see that these things are starting to shake and you can also see that the pressures have changed now. Uh, cylinder two has the highest pressure. So X is a zero. The one who just did the diffusal is going to alert X a I'm done. I have diffused. I've diffused the power. You can now go and start checking uh, these these new pressures, which is what it'll do. So it'll do the comparison again. You can see that not, the values are changing until we're done and we've found that two had the highest pressure with 277. We'll create another diffuser. He's going to go into two which is that one right there. He's going to power it down. The pressures have now jumped. You'll notice that they now start with a 300. So they were originally starting with a 100, then a 200. Now they're at 300. We're going to signal, say that we're done. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to diffuse another one. This time we're diffusing number three. Done. And now you'll see the pressures are at 400. And these things are getting violent. Uh, we're going to do that one more time. We're now going to go to diffuse cylinder zero. There's only one cylinder left and the pressure is in the 500s. This is important. So we're going to once do once more do our comparison because we never know which cylinder is going to end up being last. So we still have to check all five of our cylinders here. And we have found that cylinder one has the highest with 586. We're going to send out a diffuser. Now, the test that I am performing is, is my value over 5000? Now, Remember when there were when we had diffused none of them, the pressure was 100 multiplied by 10, which is what I'm storing it in X. That's 1000. Then in the second round, it's 2000. Third round is three, four and then five. So what I know is that if my X value after all this is over 5000, that means that this is the fifth cylinder. That means we are done. We don't need to do any more comparisons. So I test that and then I hold on to that result in T because I still need to wait for my diffuser to go and say, okay, I'm done diffusing because that's his signal for him to self terminate. So he tells us, okay, I am done. And execution agent A also knows that he's done because our X values over 5,000. So he's just going to halt. And there you go. We have avoided a convenience store planned out uh, apocalyptic scenario and did it in a pretty efficient manner too, which is good when it comes to these kinds of things. But there you have it. I was, I was pretty happy to see how well this one turned out for me.